Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode 16 of the Mixology Talk podcast, where we demystify mixology and help you learn to make great cocktails the easy way. I'm Julia. And I'm Chris. And way back in episode number three, we briefly introduced tequila as a spirit and talked about how it's made. So today we're going to take that lonely ball of tequila off the shelf and we're going to take it out for a spin and show it a good time. No more margaritas and tequila sunrises. We're actually going to get a little bit creative. Watch out. Watch out. (laughs) So last week, Chris and I went on a long-awaited weekend trip to the Mayan Riviera in Mexico. We were staying at an all-inclusive resort, which means you pay one price, and it includes all the food and all the cocktails. Yeah, I think they lost money on me, that's for sure. They definitely lost money on us. It's (laughs) important, I think, for us to make sure that we get our money's worth. Right, and um, one of the things that really surprised me when we got there was they actually carried Fernet there, and it just blew my mind that they would have Fernet at a place in Mexican Riviera. Yeah, well, they had Fernet when we arrived, but I think they might have run out by the time we left. Yeah, sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one uh, one afternoon, we were walking up to the bar, and I asked Chris for some ideas for things that I could order that use tequila. Since we're in Mexico, I felt like it makes sense to get a, a tequila cocktail. Um, and so I know there's a margarita, And I've heard of a tequila sunrise, and Chris even suggested something I hadn't heard of called a paloma, but that was about it. Yeah, there just aren't a lot of standard well-known cocktails that use tequila as a primary spirit. Um, There's definitely, like, shots. That's usually how tequila is pretty common, mostly. Or when you get into your añejos, I think that that, uh, it's not uncommon for folks to drink it as a sipping. Right, exactly. Um, But as far as cocktails, they're fairly limited as far as classics go, for sure. So today, we're going to be taking back some cocktail territory for Mexico. Yes, tequila is an incredibly versatile spirit, and I think it's a shame that it's been relegated to just a couple of common drink recipes. So there are a lot of other recipes out there that would work really well with tequila used instead of the usual ingredients. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to go through a couple of ideas that we came up with for common cocktails that you can swap out with tequila and make something super tasty. Absolutely. So the first one that came to mind for me is a plain old gin and tonic. So, uh, one of my favorites on a hot day. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. And tonic is a little bit of an acquired taste. And if you wanted to, you could certainly just use soda. But I think it's a great contrast to these relatively high proof spirits. So replacing your gin in a gin and tonic with tequila to make a tonic in tequila, which is cleverly alliterative... <laughs> I'm not sure is a word, but I think you know what I mean. <laughs> it's a super simple drink that's very refreshing. And you'll definitely want to use a clear tequila on this one, like a Blanco or a Silver, um, and uh, throw a lime wedge on it. I think that'll be super tasty. Yeah, and there is actually another um, kind of somewhat famous uh, tequila cocktail um, that is a great alternative for brunch, and that is called a Bloody Maria. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just a Bloody Mary with tequila. Um, Nobody got very creative with the name, but (laughs) it's a really fantastic uh, blend of the tequila with the tomato base. In my opinion, it actually makes a better Bloody Mary. So is it? does it taste that different? It does, actually, yeah. It adds a lot more kind of body and interest to the drink. Um, and it's just a really, really good way of enjoying tequila, in my opinion. I could see that adding a little flavor, because traditionally you use vodka when you don't want to add any flavor at all. You kind of just want the spirit. Right, absolutely, yeah. So you're you're just kind of looking really as a ba- at the base for all the flavor, where now, if you have the tequila in there, it adds a whole new element to the drink. You can get a little bit of that earthiness, which probably plays well with the tomato. Oh, everything in there, yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a really great choice. So uh, I've probably mentioned before, one of my favorite cocktails is the Moscow Mule, um, and that is made with vodka, lime, and ginger beer. She loves ginger. I love ginger. <laughs> I have a ginger problem. <laughs> so... In this case, I think you could absolutely swap out a uh, swap out the vodka and replace it with a blanco tequila, kind of similar to the Bloody Mary, actually, um, and you'll end up with a Spanish mule variation. Yeah, the um, agave and ginger they just 
play really nicely together, and it's a great combination of flavors for sure. That's something you've uh, when you're when you're creating drinks. I've, I've seen you use uh, ginger and tequila together several times. Yo, absolutely, yeah. No, they're just very very compatible um, flavors for sure. I'm just looking to validate my addiction, basically. Totally. No, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so another one of my favorite cocktails um, is a cocktail called the Last Word, and traditionally it's gin. Maraschino, lime juice, and green chartreuse, one of my favorite ingredients on the planet. Um, (laughs) But now we're going to kind of do a twist to it and call it La Palabra Final. That's right. That's my high school Spanish. Barely translated this cocktail, and uh, I butchered it. So for everybody uh, that actually speaks Spanish and listens to this podcast, I apologize immensely. (laughs) I think you got the words right, but we might want to work on the pronunciation. Oh, no. There's no hope for me. (laughs) Um, So basically what you're going to do is you're going to be replacing the gin with a Blanco tequila, and it's going to give a really great variation on that fantastic cocktail the last word and i think what i like about this one is i i I think a lot of folks um dismiss the last word because they don't like the juniper flavor but in this case it's it's got all the goodness all the other good stuff of the last word cocktail but pulling out the gin and replacing it with tequila takes away that sort of divisive juniper note and replaces it with that sort of tasty, earthy kind of spiciness of tequila. Yeah, it's a really, really great variation on that cocktail. It's, yeah, I I might have to stop right now and make one. (laughs) (laughs) Don't stop. We're right in the middle of things. Yeah, no, I think that's a good idea. If you if you think you don't like a last word, maybe give this one a whirl. So uh, last but not least is Chris's favorite cocktail, the Manhattan. Ah, yes. <laughs> Let's take a moment. I'm <laughs> kidding. It's, a, it's typically made with bourbon, but you could absolutely swap in an Añejo tequila with a lighter style of sweet vermouth, like, say, Martini and Rossi. And if you have them, which is probably pretty uncommon, but if you do, a dash of mole bitters would be a great finishing touch. Yeah, that sounds like the perfect way to kind of finish off Cinco de Mayo right there for me. I could see that, <laughs> definitely. And uh, since we're since we're playing with a Manhattan and turning it into sort of a mix- Mexican variant, I thought I'd get really, really creative on the name and call this one Mexico City. Good one. Thanks. That's, uh, that took that's me all week. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so there are um, some other cocktails I've designed in the past that would definitely work with tequila and really make the uh, the agave shine, but you're probably going to need some special equipment and definitely some patience and time. This is uh, some craziness coming through here. Yeah, so one of my favorite tequilas, uh, or one of my favorite uh, tequila cocktails that I made was a couple years ago, I made a Blanco tequila with a celery and pink peppercorn soda, and it is absolutely fantastic. You get that kind of salty earthiness from the celery, and then you get these the, the taste of the pink peppercorn that adds just a touch of heat to it, and it's really, really good together. I've noticed that um, you've used celery in several different ways with tequila over the years. Um, I, we, so we've made celery juice using the juicer. Um, we've also, you also frequently use celery bitters. Yeah, absolutely. And And celery salt and things like that. It seems like it just plays really nicely with tequila. Yeah. So like when you have a margarita, you have that touch of salt and celery kind of has this natural kind of saltiness to it. And it's just a really, really great pairing. Um, there was another one I did with, uh, pineapple juice and celery and kind of muddled together and it was fantastic as well. So it's a really great combination. Actually, um, tequila and pineapple are just that's another good one. Absolutely natural together. They're really, really good. So if you're looking for some inspiration, tequila and pineapple juice, that's a great place to start. Is pineapple juice in a tequila sunrise? Uh, no, I believe that's orange juice. Ah, okay. Orange juice and grenadine. Um, so one of the last cocktails I made uh, for a large event was... Um, Tequila with a cantaloupe puree, had a little touch of uh, lime juice in there, Lillet, which is kind of a sweet French wine, and some Peychaud's bitters, which has kind of a nice, subtle cherry note to it as well. It was a fantastic cocktail. And unfortunately, it was about 700 of them that I had to make, so I think we ended up uh, juicing um, about... 32 cantaloupes that time. Oh my gosh, our entire house was covered in cantaloupe juice. Yeah, it was it was a problem. And even now, Julia can't have a cantaloupe without thinking about tequila. Which isn't a bad thing. But yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a bit much, but it was a great combination together, and it really kind of um, played off some of the sweet, earthy notes of the tequila in there as well. 
Definitely. So if you are thinking about swapping tequila into one of your favorite cocktails, here's a couple tips for you to think about as you do that. First of all, as you may have noticed as we went through the last couple cocktails, we've been trying to match the amount of time that the spirit has seen in oak um, for the spirit that we're swapping with and the tequila that we're swapping it with. So for example, with a gin that's never seen any time in a barrel, we're going to typically go for a silver or blanco tequila. Um, and then in the case of the Mexico City cocktail, which has an awesome name, thank you very much. Amazing! <laughs> um, we replaced bourbon, so we went for an añejo, or you could probably get away with a reposado. Um, again, because it that tequila Tequila has seen some time in oak, so it's going to be a little bit of an easier swap. Yeah, the transition will be a lot easier between the spirits, um, for sure. And just as another general rule of thumb, um, with working uh, or making cocktails with tequila, lime juice just seems to work really good, um, even better than lemon juice. It seems like there's a natural affinity between those two items, and I've actually tried it with uh, tried a couple of different cocktails using lemon juice and it just it didn't have that i don't know it just doesn't work quite as well yeah yeah so i think it's just too many margaritas and kind of imprinted into my head i just they're in your blood combination out of my head (laughs) so um which is interesting though because i know that the rule that you've sort of taught me is if you don't know where to start Take a look at your base spirit, and if it's never seen any time in oak, you're usually going to choose lime. But if it has seen time in oak, like uh, um, bourbon or something like that, you're going to want to go with lemon juice. Yeah, that's typically my rule of thumb for starting cocktail creation and trying to make a cocktail from scratch. And it definitely works more often than not. Now, the exception to that rule, like we just talked about, is tequila. And for some reason, it's always lime juice, no matter what. It's so for all weird. the different ages, like you're even for an añejo, you would still go with with a, a lime. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good to know. That's really helpful. So if you are trying to choose a cocktail to swap in your tequila, you may want to stick with cocktails that either don't use citrus or that stick with lime. Yeah, or just swap out the lemon for the lime and see if it works out a little bit better Yeah, for definitely. You. Experiment. So hopefully this episode has inspired you to go revisit that dusty bottle of tequila and show it a good time. And for next week, do you ever wonder what's going through the bartender's head while you order? Oh, man, this is going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Come back next week and we're going to be talking a little bit about the, what the bartender is thinking. And if you just want the show notes and a a summary of this episode, along with all the tasty recipes we talked about, head on over to mixologytalk.com slash 16. So head on over to the bar at home, grab that bottle of tequila, and we're going to see you guys next week. So cheers, everyone. Cheers. Never miss an episode by subscribing in iTunes or YouTube. And as always, check out the show notes by clicking on the right.